Welcome back to Yahoo Finance Live. I am Adam Shapiro here at Moynihan Train Hall in New York City. We're getting ready for our one hour special, the holiday takeoff, because the holiday travel season will be here in roughly three weeks. Let's get a preview though of what you might be able to expect with the president and CEO, the chief executive officer of Hilton, Chris Nassetta. Thank you for joining us. Brian Sauzy is also here. Let's start this off with you, Mr. Nassetta, because you have more than one million hotel rooms worldwide. What are you expecting as the holiday season gets going into high gear? I think we expect to have a pretty good holiday season. First of all, Adam and Brian, thanks, thanks for having me on. We just reported third quarter last week um, and we reported a pretty good quarter. We're you're obviously not fully recovered back to 19 levels, but we made really good progress. We had probably the best summer leisure season that we've ever had um, in our 102 year history. Business travel um, came back meaningfully, probably about uh, 75% of levels that we had in 2019. Group, group uh, meetings are, are lagging, but that would be expected in any, any kind of recovery period. And, uh, and so we, you know, we come into the third quarter and into the holiday season feeling very, very good about recovery. I think the holiday leisure season is going to be very, very strong, just as the summer season was. And for that matter, weekends are. We're, we're experiencing some of the highest levels of occupancy that we ever have on weekends because while you know people are going back to offices more and kids are back in school, they still have weekends and, and they still want to get out and they want to travel. So I think we, you know, we expect uh, through the rest of this year to have, uh, and as we get in the holiday season, have very strong leisure business and a continued recovery in the other big segments of the business. Chris, yeah, the hotels by me on the weekend, they've been slammed. Uh, what parts of the country are you seeing that strength on the weekends? The weekends are slammed everywhere, Brian. I mean, literally, I think, you know, you know we're running anywhere from, you know, 80, 85, and some, and some weekends we're running close to 90% occupancy on average in, in the United States using that as a, as a, as a proxy since it is the biggest chunk of, um, of our distribution. And, and that's across you know, nearly 5,000 hotels. Um, so it is, it is literally pretty much everywhere. I'd say that you know, the one area that continues to lag a bit, which is probably not surprising, is the urban markets have been a little bit on a lag for a whole bunch of reasons, you know, as we continue to sort of work our way through what I hope is the final stages of COVID, they're a little bit more dense environment. They haven't had as much international or very little, if any, international inbound travel. That is obviously going to change here starting in a week or so. Um, and, you know, they haven't had a lot of the, you know, sort of the group meetings base that, that helps a lot of the cities really thrive. And I, while, while I think the rest of this year will be a little bit slower on the group, as we've been expecting, I think next year, particularly as we get into queues two through four, is going to be a barn burner because there's just a massive amount of pent up demand generally, some of which is being, has been released in, in leisure, but a lot of which is still to be released in business travel. And particularly um, a lot of which is, right. is to be released in, in group travel. Chris, we hear the same kind of stuff from the airlines. Uh, we also hear that TSA, January 18th, may let us know if I can drop the mask along with 330 million other Americans who want to travel. When you say a barn burner, prices are also going up the airlines because of jet fuel. What about at the hotels? What's the situation with pricing as we go into 2022 and 2023? Yeah, well, I think, listen, the laws of economics are alive and, and well, as I say to my team, and that is, you know, we are in an inflationary environment um, across the board. We can debate, well, I probably won't do it because I'm not an economist, whether it is transitory or not. But at the moment, not every night and not for every hotel, but broadly, um, where we have demand, we are, we, you know, we have more demand than we can satisfy. And as a result, you know, our prices are moving up. We've particularly seen that in stronger leisure periods, um, you know, through the summer where rates were above 19 levels. We've seen that on weekends, you know, through, throughout the last, you know, probably four or five months where we're pricing above 19 levels. And I do think, um, you know, that you'll continue, you'll continue to see as long as we're in, in that kind of environment, 
you'll continue to see pressure on rates to go up. Um, you know, in the, in the business transient, you know, certain nights when they're busy, there's rate pressure, uh, but there's still more to build back there uh, in terms of the occupancy rates. And then, as I said, you know, as you get as you get into next year and you have the group base come back, I mean, particularly in the cities, if you think about it, the group base is the one thing that we sell significantly in advance, and it takes a lot of rooms out of inventory. Um, and when you have fewer rooms in inventory against significant demand, um, obviously allows you, you know, to, to it creates pricing uh, pressure and pricing power. And so I expect, um, like pretty much everywhere, people are seeing inflationary pressures and prices going up. You're going you're gonna to continue. You've seen it already in our space, and I think as we get into 22 and 23, you're, you're going to see more of it. Well, Chris, just leave my buffet prices alone, please. Thank you very much. You know, I do want to ask you about, uh, <laughs> leave you about. Uh, hey, the about good, labor. hey, the good news is, Brian, I know, you know, yeah. if, you, if you stay in most of our limited service brands, then your buffet is free. So, you know, okay. just, you know, you just can't, you know, you can't be, you know, staying at Waldorf Astoria's and, you know, high priced <laughs> hotels all the time. Stay at well, Hampton, you know, Hampton I, Inns and Homewood Suites, uh, you know, they're. They're, you know, true. They're fabulous products, and you'll get your you'll get your breakfast. Point well taken. No inflation uh, on breakfast uh, at some Hiltons. But Chris, I do want to ask you about uh, the labor shortages. Has Hilton had to adjust any hours at its hotels because of it just can't find workers? We well, we've had to make a lot of adjustments, and as demand has been coming back, I would say singularly that's been the the biggest challenge that we've had, and. You're hearing about a lot of supply chain issues around the country and the world for that matter. I think it's a very complex ecosystem, but a, a, a meaningful part of that is just, you know, all of us are having a hard time finding labor to do the things um, that, that we do to be able to serve customers. And so um, it has certainly not meant that we'd ha we've had to, you know, reduce occupancies much. Uh, in the early stages of recovery, we did a little bit, but we're not now. Um, or that we've had to really limit services, but we've been having to work really hard to get the folks that we need, um, you know, in the hotels to help us deliver the exceptional experiences that we do for our customers. We have seen some easing in that um, here in the U.S. I, I expect over the next six or 12 months, we'll continue to see some easing on that front. And then, you know, we are doing a bunch of things, obviously, in terms of pay, benefits, and by the way, the most important thing we can do at Hilton is continue to be the number one great place to work in the United States, the number three great place to work in, in the world, because people, we hope and think, w would rather come work for us uh, and then stay with us uh, than go, go to other places. Having a, a fabulous culture is the most important thing we can do. But also part of that is pay benefits, making sure we have flexible scheduling, you know, making sure that people that want to you know, work only for limited amounts of time, we give them access to our ecosystem so that they can, uh, maybe not on a full-time basis, but a, a part-time basis, and, and uh, not just for surge periods of demand, but broadly, they can, they can be part of the Hilton family. And so that we have a whole bunch of different initiatives in play, and um, we're, we're making yes. our way through it. It's, it's challenging, but we're making our way through it. Chris, unlike Mr. Sauzy, I'm not a breakfast guy. I'm more a free coffee guy. So as long as the coffee's free, you got me. But I got to ask you, as we wrap this up, we have a Twitter poll going about whether people intend to travel for the holidays. We're going to share the results at the end of the 12 o'clock hour. What's the most important thing you want people to know if they are going to hit the road for Thanksgiving and for Christmas? Because we already know, at least from some of the airlines and the trains, that bookings are on par with 2019. Yeah, I, I would say uh, patience. You know, there are still challenges in, in, in the entire travel ecosystem, you know, whether that's in the airports, whether that's on planes, uh, for that matter, in hotels. We are all, you know, doing our level best. Um, but there are, there are struggles in terms of getting certain materials into the, in, into the ecosystem, labor and the like. Um, I would encourage them to do it. I plan to travel for the holidays with my wife and my six daughters. Uh, I happen to love travel. Um, and I think if you stay at any of our 6,000 plus hotels in the world, we're gonna do a terrific job and we're gonna deliver an unbelievable 
experience with uh, friendly service and, and all of the amenities and, and, and service and product attributes that you need. But I think the entire journey as we're sort of evolving out of this pandemic and getting into the new normal, which I, I hope and think is coming very quickly, you know, there are going to be, uh, like we're seeing in lots of different uh, parts of our lives, there are going to be some, uh, you know, there are going to be some bumps and bruises. So I'd say get out and do it. See the world, see your family, see your friends, see your partners in business, congregate in the right ways, in a safe way, uh, and, and, and just be a, a, a bit patient for as, as we work through these final stages of, of COVID-19. Chris, I think a great many Americans have wanderlust right now and are going to take your advice. Chris said 